All right. Ready to fly? Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in time and space. Kitty is here. Is this the same place? All right. It, uh, Neofly says that we ended in Hungary, right? At LH58. LH58. Yep. This is the place. All right. So, yeah, we have left Germany. We went into Poland. Uh, it's crazy that these countries are so close. It's like going, you know, three countries and like the distance to go from Colorado to Wyoming. Amazing. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Let me change this from starting stream to stream proper. And I need to turn on my automatic scene switcher now that we've started. Uh, there we go. Okay, and switch over to NeoFly. LH58. Keep an eye on the map in the bottom, what we're looking. So that'll take us, that looks like uh, we're still in Hungary. I wanted to fly by Budapest. So it's just right around the corner. So yeah, I guess we'll just see if we can take this job here. $12,225. We need to go 75 miles, 1,467 pounds. And we're taking 1,467 pounds of computers to LHS. And let's go ahead and take that. Uh, add this like job to the aircraft to see the jobs you have assigned to this. We already have a job. Did I pick one yesterday? No. But we definitely need some more fuel, so I'm glad they brought that up. Uh, it could be because the engines are on. Yeah. Yep, yep. Neofly doesn't like to do anything with your engines on. Get logged into push talk. Um... All right, we'll give it a second. And we'll try it again. Transporter from dispatch. It's a cargo mission today. When you check the payload in the flight plan, please release the parking brake to start. Pilot from dispatch. The cargo door is open and the cargo is being transferred. Easy with the paint there, fellas. Transporter, loading is complete. Let's go. All right. Before we do, chat is up. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. Hello, Henny. We are in Hungary. And we're going to LHSN. Tolmok. Let's change this here. H five eight. L H S N.
So for those of you that may want to follow along or, well, I don't know, you want to, there it is up on the top of the screen there. Sorry for being a couple minutes late. My daughter purchased an Uber computer, an Uber gaming computer. It's a monster. Anyway, she has been having some, uh, it's getting used to it. You know what I mean? When you move up from something very, very low end mid range and you immediately move into something high end, you know, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of bells and whistles that she's just never seen or heard of before. And, you know, it'd be great if everything just worked perfect. And for the most part, I think it is. She's just, uh, anyway, she was. Had some concerns right before I start, so I was trying to help her out and get her OBS running. She's going to be streaming, uh, like, Zoo Planner or something like that today. All right. Make sure we're logged in here. Okay, and there we are. So, in Hungary... We're going to be flying this way. So we have these landmarks over here at Budapest to see. Okay. Good enough. Hope you're having a great day. If it wasn't for the Goofy world of politics. Uh, it would be a stellar day, ladies and gents. Glad we have this time to get in the air and try to forget about it. Have a nice flight. But usually being left alone with my thoughts while I'm flying, I just tend to get more mad. All right, autopilot, nav, yaw damper, flight level change, and I think I want to go to heading, actually, and divert a few degrees so we can hit Budapest. Oh, wrong way. Let's go with heading. That should put us roughly going the right way. Maybe a few more degrees. a little bit more. I'm going to change it over to vertical speed and raise the nose. 600 feet per minute. Go. Twelve hundred feet per minute. The weather looks great. So, you're just tuning in recently and haven't been following along lately. Uh, I am now in Europe, and 
been spending time in Germany, and I thought I'd just go ahead and let the Neofly jobs take us wherever. And they uh, have taken us to Poland, through the Czech Republic, down into Hungary, and now we're headed towards Budapest, or Budapest, as I hear people on the news call it. I don't know what the proper pronunciation is. Names of places change seem to change all the time. Oh, it was Kiev. Now it's Kiev. And it used to be Tatar. And now it's Cutter and Gutter. And wish they'd make up their mind. Tomorrow, Friday. Yeah, hmm. I might have to, I don't know. I might have to uninstall some things. I'd have to check out space. I'm not done playing a couple other titles at the moment. I'm not live streaming them, but I'm still trying to finish up other titles so I'll have to check space It's starting to get a little bit more neutral in tone. Like, as we went down through Germany, everything was, like, super bright green. As we've been traveling this way, it's more like going towards, like, Colorado territory. I mean, the, the ground, nothing is really, like, super green. Still very green, but you see how it's kind of, it's more muted. This is a uh, bush talk. It's an it's using open street maps. Big highway up ahead. No, what do you mean? Funny seeing my other side. What the the killer side? The, the the one that wants to shoot things? And he says in the uh, in the chat room, if it doesn't work, it's all right. But it'd be funny seeing your other side, if you know what I mean. And that that's kind of all I can think of that it would mean that the pew pew side. That's funny. The darker side. Yep. The the darker side of Sky Dude. I uh really enjoy um I really enjoy PvP. I really enjoy, uh it used to be great in Star Trek Online for a while. And they kind of killed it. And uh, there was Starfleet Command. Really enjoy that kind of PvP. For a while, I was into uh, Counter Strike. Um, and I'm always out there. Um, 
making posts. I have, uh, as a matter of fact, I got banned at one time for 30 days or so in Microsoft Flight Simulator because I said that they were stupid for not moving on bringing back combat for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And the, they are, I don't know what it is over there, if they're just ultimately super pacifists or what, but it's a taboo subject. Even though all through the alphas, when, when Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 was being developed and it was still an alpha and we were all testing it, in the master controls, there were always the weapon options. Okay. So Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, uh, 2020 built off of Flight Simulator X. It had weapon options. Not only that did it have this the standard Flight Simulator X weapon options, it had a lot more weapon options. So combat was, in my opinion, absolutely going to be included in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And then all of a sudden, if you brought up combat, they would shut you down quick. There will be no combat in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm like, what is wrong with you people? At the end of the day, isn't money what it's all about? Don't you want to make money? Why? Why would you do that? And that's kind of starting what get me in trouble. I'm like, who's making the decisions over there? You people are buffoons. You you know, in the Top Gear, the Top Gear, the Top Gun stuff was all neutered, no combat. We're getting we got a Top Gear expansion, but no combat. And that is ridiculous to me. Okay. We this is Budapest. Let me pause here for a moment. And zoom in here. So if we take a hard right across this river, we have this. The Hungarian Parliament Building, also known as the Parliament of Budapest after its location, is the seat of the National Assembly of Hungary, a notable landmark of Hungary and a popular tourist destination in Budapest. It is situated on Kossuth Square in the Pest side of the city, the, the eastern bank of the Danube. It was designed by Hungarian architect Imre Steindl in neo-Gothic style and opened in 1902. It has been the largest building in Hungary since its completion. All right, so... And that would be it right there. Hungarian Parliament Building. Let's drift down here and take a good look. On the, on the pest side, that was funny. Oh, you guys are a bunch of pests. Uh... Hungarian Parliament building, oh, it's doing it again. known as the Parliament of okay. Budapest, after its location, is the seat of the national. Well, we'll get to hear say the pest side again. Landmark of Hungary and a popular tourist destination in Budapest. It is situated on Kossuth Square in the pest side of the city, on the eastern bank of the Danube. It was designed by Hungarian architect Imre Steindl in neo-Gothic style and opened in 1902. It has been the largest building in Hungary since its completion. Yeah, man, you could have some killer parties there, man. Look at all the rooms for people. Yeah, this is really pretty. Very, very pretty. I love that. The flying the the, the flying buttresses. Right? I learned something from art school. Yeah, flying buttresses. It, make, it looks like it makes it look like a rocket ship. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, uh, looking over here again. What do we have? We have. Close this. 
we have right next door just to the north heroes square and to the south buddha castle do that first. Buda Castle is the historical castle and palace complex of the Hungarian kings in Budapest. It was first completed in 1265, but the massive Baroque palace today occupying most of the site was built between 1749 and 1769. The complex in the past was referred to as either the Royal Palace or the Royal Castle. The castle now houses the Hungarian National Gallery and the Budapest History Museum. Buda Castle sits on the southern tip of Castle Hill, surrounded by the touristic area known as Varnagid, which is famous for medieval, Baroque and neoclassical houses, churches, public buildings, and monuments. The hill is linked to Clark Adams Square and the Cheney Chain Bridge by the Castle Hill Funicular. The castle is a part of the Budapest World Heritage Site, so declared in 1987. The original royal palace was ruined during World War II, it was rebuilt in a simplified style in Baroque well, style it. during the Kadar era. Oh, and it says it's on the other side. Oh, I know. All I know is that I got shut down. I guess I was being a little too critical. But again, they're just... They always put in big cap letters, there will be no combat in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And that's just, this is my live stream, so I can say that's just stupid. It is stupid. It's a bad business decision. But like, go play DCS. Again, that's the whole point. I didn't, I don't want to. You know, I didn't want to. I wanted to play. I want combat in this simulator. I think that's the castle right below. Situated on the hill or near the hill, said. So maybe. No, it says it's still up ahead. Let me zoom back down onto this thing. The more we zoom down, the closer we are. So right over now. So here is another citadella right off to our port side. The Citadella is the fortification located upon the top of Gellert Hill in Budapest, Hungary. Citadella is the Hungarian word for citadel, a kind of fortress. The word is exclusively used by other languages to refer to the Gellert Hill Citadel which occupies a place which held strategic importance in Budapest's military history. Well, sure. The fortress was built in 1851 by Julius Jacob von Hainau, a commander of the Austrian Empire, and was designed by Emanuel Zeta and Ferenc Kasselik after the Hungarian Revolution of 1848. It occupies almost the entire 235 meters high plateau. The fortress is a U-shaped structure built about a central courtyard, being 220 meters long, 60 meters wide, and 4 meters tall. It had a complement of 60 cannons. Actually built by Hungarian forced laborers, it was finished in 1854. In June 1854, Austrian troops settled in the citadel. After the Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867 and the establishment of Austria-Hungary, the Hungarians demanded the destruction of the citadel, but the garrison troops left only in 1897, when the main gate was symbolically damaged. It was not until late 1899 when the city took possession of the citadel. A few months later, in 1900, the walls were demolished. In the Hungarian Revolution of 1956, Soviet troops occupied the Citadella and fired down into the city during the assault that overthrew the Nagy-led Hungarian government. Wow. I wonder if that's supposed to be the palace complex. Yeah, it says that right next to us is the castle. So again, it's not in the simulator, but I mean, you can see the footprint of it. So that is the royal, the old royal. 
castle complex. I wish they would have just done that in Mexico with all the pyramids. Instead of letting it autogen crappy buildings over the top of it, just leave the terrain barren like that. Okay, what's next? Next, we have... On the past side... I think this is just in general about the city. Budapest is the capital and most populous city of Hungary. It is the ninth largest city in the European Union by population within city limits and the second largest city on the Danube River. The city has an estimated population of 1,752,286 over a land area of about 525 square kilometers. Budapest, which is both a city and county, forms the center of the Budapest metropolitan area, which has an area of 7,626 square kilometers and a population of 3,303,786. It is a primate city, constituting 33% of the population of Hungary. The city was the focal point of the Hungarian Revolution of 1848, the Battle of Budapest in 1945, as well as the Hungarian Revolution of 1956. Budapest is a global city with strengths in commerce, finance, media, art, fashion, research, technology, education, and entertainment. Hungary's financial center, it is the second richest capital and city in the region after Bucharest. Budapest is the headquarters of the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, the European Police College and the first foreign office of the China Investment Promotion Agency. Over 40 colleges and universities are located in Budapest. Opened in 1896, the city's subway system, the Budapest Metro, serves 1.27 million, while the Budapest Tram Network serves 1.08 million passengers daily. The central area of Budapest along the Danube River is classified as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and has several notable monuments of classical architecture, including the Hungarian Parliament and the Buda Castle. The city also has around 80 geothermal springs, the largest thermal water cave system, second largest synagogue, and third largest parliament building in the world. Budapest attracts around 12 million international tourists oh, per year, making it a highly popular destination in Europe. It also topped the best European destinations 2020 list by Big 7 Media. It is very jam-packed. And I wanted to fly by the railway station. They've got a really big railway station a system that, uh, going on. And there's a place up ahead over here called Heroes Square. Heroes Square is one of the major squares in Budapest, Hungary, noted for its iconic statue complex featuring the seven chieftains of the Magyars and other important Hungarian national leaders, as well as the Memorial Stone of Heroes, often erroneously referred as the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The square lies at the outbound end of Ondrashi Avenue next to the city park. It hosts the Museum of Fine Arts and the Muxanok. The square has played an important part in contemporary Hungarian history and has been a host to many political events, such as the reburial of Imre Nodge in 1989. The sculptures were made by sculptor George Zala from Lendava. All right, so I take it that to be the museum. Let me go to the map. It's just right over there near this intersection roundabout. Do do do. do, do. I do believe this is it. 
it matches. That shape. Yeah, that's it. I wonder if this little red building here is an, just a computer artifact. Seems awful weird. Stick a little uh, red building right in the middle of it. So yeah, I think I'll bet you that's a just an autogen mistake. It can't all be perfect. Yet, one of these days, everything will all be perfect, perfect. All right. We'll get back up to our plane and now get uh, back on track. Go to our job, unless anybody else wants to see anything else in particular. Always heard of the Danube River, you know, now we're seeing it. Isn't there a famous piece of classical music, the Blue Danube? Looks like a racetrack down there in the middle of that island. How posh. Let's go back to nav. And we're on our way. Off to make some money. Oh, there's something over here. Hunger Roaring. The Hunger Roaring is a motorsport racetrack in Mogyorod, Hungary, where the Formula One Hungarian Grand Prix is held. In 1986, it became the location of the first Formula One Grand Prix behind the Iron Curtain. Yeah, let's go see that. Eccleston wanted a race in the USSR, but a Hungarian friend recommended Budapest. They wanted a street circuit similar to the Circuit de Monaco to be built in the Neplage, Budapest's largest park, but the government decided to build a new circuit just outside the city near a major highway. Construction work started on the 1st of October 1985. It was built in eight months, less time than any other Formula One circuit. The first race was held on the 24th of March 1986, in memory of Janos Drapel, the first Hungarian who won motorcycle Grand Prix races. According to a survey put together by the National Tourism Office of Hungary, Mogyorod ranks third among Hungarian destinations visited by tourists, behind the Danube Bend area and Lake Balaton, but ahead of Budapest. The circuit has via grade one license. I don't know what that last part means.
Very cool. The Hunger Roaring is a motorsport racetrack in Mogyorod, Hungary, where the Formula One Hungarian Grand Prix is held. Yeah, we heard you the first time. Okay. Nice. It's like a little tiny one for <laughs> mini car races. That little tiny one over there. Those helicopter pads? What is that? Oh, you know what? When we get back to Germany, I've got to find the Nurburgring. So on shows, the racing shows that I like, like Top Gear, or in general, any good racing show, they're always talking about the Nurburgring. Always, always. For one of the uh, well, just being a great racetrack, but I guess one of the longest, I don't know how to describe it, straight stretches. It's got one of the longest straight. So it allows people to get their vehicles up to as high as they can go. Watching the, the Bugatti, James May, I'll never forget that. James May in a Bugatti on the Nurburgring, opening it up and getting it to go as fast as it can go. Breathtaking. Okay. Now we can get back. On track. Climbing. She doesn't seem like she's climbing at all. Doing an alt hold. No, she's climbing. Think we'll be all right. Henning, I don't know if you're still there or not. You know what I'm talking about? The, you know what the Nurburgring? Pull it up. I hope I'm saying it right. Nurburgring. Yeah, 150,000 person capacity motorsport complex located in the town of Nurburg, Rhineland. Blatt in eight, Germany. Features a Grand Prix racetrack built in 1984 and a long North Loop track built around the 1920s around the medieval village castle of Nurburg in the Eiffel Mountains. So when I get back to Germany, I need to find Nurburg and check that out. Also, I would need to find out uh, 
the autobahn you know and is that like every highway over there or is it a specific stretch of highway autobahn about as a federal controlled access highway system in germany the official german term is bundes autobahn abbreviated bab which translates as federal motorway literal meaning of the word Bundes Autobahn is federal automobile track. Much of the system has no speed limit. I heard that's crazy. So I guess that just applies to all the highways. How German Autobahns changed the world. Not really. I mean, we have a lot of we we have speed limits here. Can't do that here. Hello, uh, ASDDSA. Can you give me a tip on how to make money in Neoflight if you start? Sure, I'd be happy to. Okay. Now, uh, let me check, see how long we have before I have to put her down. Okay, plenty of time. 14 minutes. Yeah, happy to, man. Or madam. Uh... And while you're here, let me go to your channel and subscribe. Thank you for coming in. I'd be happy to help. ASD DSA. And in case you do some videos out there, I'm now subscribed. <laughs> okay, Neofly. All right. Um, okay, you got your pilot set up. Okay, the top one here is your job finder. And uh, you set your distances, right? Or how much weight you can carry. And then you start filtering the jobs. I normally do which one's going to pay the most, so I, I filter them by rewards. So this job here, 30,000 for 172 miles. Okay, so the job finder here. If you want to do freelance, let's say you just want to fly whatever you want to fly. You don't have to rent the plane. You can just select any plane you want in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and it will allow you, it'll then set up different uh, freelance jobs for you. But you don't make hardly any money doing the freelance jobs because you don't own the plane. You're not renting the plane. You're just being hired as the pilot to fly the plane. But the freedom of this is you can fly whatever you want, however you feel that day. So if money's not the biggest concern, okay. That's that's a way to do it. Okay, other ways to make money. The market, which I don't really do. I'm not one of those people that's good with spreadsheets. Okay? But playing the market, knowing what airports are selling what and what airports are buying what. And sometimes you'll see at certain airports, there's going to have over here profits in this category right here, profit. Sometimes you'll see mega pluses, like plus four, times four, or whatever. So someday certain items on the market at certain airports are in high demand. So by doing short runs between airports with high demands, you can make good money. Uh, but again, I don't normally do this. But um, And then you can find out what they're buying and selling by typing in the airport here. Like, my home airport is KCOS. And right here, there's one of those pluses to profit. So they want mechanical parts at my home airport. And it's plus like a thousand. It's plus 1,428. So if you find a place that's got really cheap, again, this place here, mechanical parts are only 10,340 for a pallet, I guess. And then if you were to take it over to my airport, um, a bonus of 1428 So, again, playing the market. All right. Now, the best way to make money, I and the best plane to make money, and I really recommend renting if you, uh, if you can. So if you come down here to the market, the aircraft market, you have the option to rent planes 
And for the money right now, the caravan, which I'm flying, uh, is the least expensive option with the highest payout, I think. The DC, I'm not really sure about. Maybe the DC-3 would be better. But either way, um, renting planes, I think, is cheaper. And if something goes wrong and it crashes, you know, your, your down payment covered all that. Okay, now going back to the best way to make money. You're going to have to spend more money, though, if uh, an upgrade, get a, a DLC for NeoFly. Okay, under staff. Manage your staff. You can hire pilots. Okay, you can also... What did I just get a beep for? Please tell me I'm not running out of fuel. I'm running out of fuel. I thought my... Oh, I forgot to top up the fuel. Holy... Holy moly free holy. Good, there's an airport right in front of me. Shoot. Um, okay. So, uh, while I drift down here, back to NeoFly real quick. So if you go down to settings, um, no, settings is, is the market. You can buy the pilot upgrade pack and hire pilots. That is the absolute best way to make money. Hire pilots, three or more pilots, and but you have to micromanage. You have to set their jobs up for them, but that's all you got to do is just set, them, set the job up for them and then tell them, go. And if you have three or four pilots and they're, if you can get them all using caravans, you can make, I want to say you can make about a hundred thousand dollars or more uh, every 30 minutes. I mean, you can make silly money. All right, so I made, when I had it, I was doing the alpha uh, for it, and I got to try the pilots. That's how I, I have so much money. I've got over $9 million, uh, and it's all because... Let me pause this for a second. Uh, I have over nine million, all because I used pilots. That's that's how. Pardon me while I deal with this real quick. Because I have my fuel synced. I can't do an emergency refuel repair with keyboard command. Let's see where this thing is at. Oh, I don't see it. That one out there. Kind of looks like an airfield. Not real sure. Pardon me, I'll get back to the chat. And if you have any further questions, I'll check in a minute. But I'm, I really got to put this plane down. Kind of looks like a strip there. Probably the best we can do. Then I can teleport it. I've got to get her on the ground, though. Um, you can also create an airline, your own airline, and run your own airline business. That's... Probably in the end, that's uh, I've never done it, but that they'll probably tell you that's the absolute best way having your own airport and running your own pilots. Uh, 
Um, another way to make an amazing amount of money if you have the money. Every day, every 24 hours... Every 24 hours, a new location appears on the Earth, which is a, a like a... It's called an exploration. There's an exploration that pops up every 24 hours. And if you find an artifact, then you can uh, make like... Five million. Let me zoom out on this map. Okay, over here in Asia, what you're looking for is this. This purple exclamation point. Okay, this changes every 24 hours. And if you teleport your plane or your pilot over to this area... And this would be very dangerous because it doesn't seem like there's any good roads or any places to be nearby. it. You might need a helicopter or something. But sometimes they're right out in the middle of fields and with roads right next to them. So sometimes you can get lucky. But if you do your exploration, and normally it has gold there, so you're going to make some money no matter what. And I've never found an artifact. But if we go back to the market and we look at artifacts, look right here. If you find, and that's just one, I don't know you if you can find multiple artifacts at a crash site. But every day, you might want to look on the map and see where the nearest artifact is. It's super expensive to go after these things unless they're very near your location. So unless you've got money to blow, I'm talking like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And when I was talking with the developers, at least in the forums at Discord, I'm like, why in the hell is everything so expensive? And they're like, well, we rationalize it this way. You were instantly teleporting to someplace around the world. And if you were a VIP and needed to get someplace around the world immediately, it would cost you this much. Either way, everything in Neofly is super expensive. All right, now let me get to the chat room. Okay. And I hope that... Okay, good. I'm hoping that all answers your question. Let me scroll through these. I've never done the campaigns. I don't know what these do. Um, if they give you... I think these are just experiences. Um... I don't know if you've done any of your training yet, your certifications. Um, right here. Qualifications. All right. This allows you, if you've never flown before, to start getting training for planes and getting uh, being able to rent and buy other planes by taking these qualifications all the way up to military planes, which I haven't done. Military planes, helicopters, airliners, um dual propeller oh, there's another dual propeller here either way the planes that you want to fly and to test out on they show up here now the key to this which messed me up for a long time is really not understanding I would pick a test okay let's say I was picking this one here all right and I click this button here to assign myself the qualification okay the location is L-K-H-I. So you click it, and it'll tell you, okay, you're all set up. Okay. So then you go out to the simulator, and you spawn yourself at L-K-H-I. But then the test doesn't start. They don't explain that you need to go to your hangar, and you need to... I'm sorry, you need to go to your pilot. Your, your pilot himself, your career. Okay, this is me. Doesn't look like me, but just picking somebody that looked swarthy. Okay, here, location. So in the simulator, you need to spawn yourself in the appropriate plane with the appropriate livery at the testing site. But then you need to come in here and click this button and type in the airport, blah, 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 that the test is supposed to be happening out, happening at. Then, you need to click 
this and trans uh, teleport your pilot to that location. So you've got to do it both. And then you may have to come up here and assign yourself to your testing aircraft. So that's kind of a pain in the butt the first time you do it. And a lot of people have struggled with that. So I hope that helps too. Uh, you've completed the one for the Douglas three, but that's very expensive to actually rent, right? I know everything is. But with the um, with the Douglas DC three and uh, and this plane right here, if you, uh, even the short runs in my town anyway, I mean like twenty four mile hops you're making really good money so uh so you'll make a lot of good money all right speaking of teleporting planes i doubt she's going to let me buy any fuel here out in the middle of a field and we might have to teleport this plane Okay. Can you? Still s says the engine is running. Let's give it another minute. Do this while the engine is running. Okay. The nearest airport. Uh, I can't believe I forgot to put fuel in. That's typical of me, though. Always doing something stupid. Two minutes after the hour. Is episode 115 of Sky Dude. Still making errors. Okay, L H T M. So in an ICO select an aircraft location. HT um. Do I want to move this pilot for a thousand bucks? We got to go like a hundred yards Just a couple of miles, okay now we need to move the plane to our location Bring this aircraft to pilot location. Plane cannot be transferred with jobs. Oh my lord, now we have to lose our job. And I can't do this while the engine is running. It sees the engine is running, but it's not. So that kind of bugged out there. Huh, how are we going to fix this? <laughs> Let's shut down NeoFly and restart it and see if it'll what it does. If not, we might restart the mission and I'm not sure yet. Might as well have a short little smoke 
break while this thing is reloading. Surprisingly, it does take a moment. Not the zippiest thing to load. Okay. It still says that I'm at LH58 here. Okay. Does it show the job still? Still shows the job. We might be able to just put us back at the start. Was down. Okay, so we're back to square one. We're back to LH fifty eight, heading to LSHN. So when we get up into the air, we could possibly just now do a teleport. I'll just speed up the simulator, I guess. Speed it up to absurd speed and... be bugged. Oh. One thing after another. I don't know, but she doesn't want to go, Joe. But we've got our fuel purchase now, so 
Try another restart, maybe? So it won't take the fuel away now. Huh, it's not sinking the fuel. That's what's going on. You see? R worked that time. Yeah, it says we're still synced, so that should have worked. Oh well, it's crazy world, man. You just gotta roll with it. And what, you don't want to go now, too? There we go. Oh boy. So, there are some problems you might run into and in how to try to fix it. HSN. All right, now I'll just speed up the simulator. Try to get us back to where we were, approximately. I think I put us much further than where we were, but that's fine. I don't mind. Okay. So we're back on track. Autobahn is like a highway in America. Some sections have no limits. 
but it's in some parts of the A5 in Bavaria, but it's not in general. Your question confused me a bit. I'm sorry if I got confused. Am I still missing something? Grab my my pipe over here. I can't believe my kid got a better computer than me. <laughs> As a parent, you know, and the economy being the way it is, uh, I've never been able to really go out and just say, "Oh, I want, I want the best." Money is no object here. Whatever it is, I don't care. I want the best. And uh, I'm used to building my own and parting things out, and you know, trying to always find the most affordable as opposed to money is no object. My kid just decided that money is no object. I'm going to get myself a $5,000 gaming computer. Well, gaming, streaming, media. And it's really cool. I don't know that I, you know, I, I, I wait for things to go on sale and hold out until the prices come down and then wait for like great again great sales or somebody just has to unload a computer or part it all out whatever i'm a, i'm a little bit envious i would really like to do that i wish i just you know yeah here here's five thousand bucks just five All right, 17 minutes after the hour. And we are making our way across Hungary. This is our first time. This is my first time in Europe. Uh, I have been just... I've been concentrating on learning to fly. All I've been concerned with is just learning to fly. And so, uh, for the first... For the first year... Well, up until now, the first, I guess we're in the third year of Simulator, but then I had a year for Alpha, too, and I did the same thing. I, uh, I, I just stuck around my hometown. So I've done all of my training for the last three years in my home, at my home airport, in my state, and I've never really ventured outside of the United States. And now I've been doing all my cross countries, and I've done air. I'm learning uh, how to fly the airliners, and um, so I've gone back and forth across the United States. I've gone up and down, and my most recent uh, major cross countries was from the middle of the United States all the way down to the tip of Argentina at Antarctica, and uh, I haven't done Canada and Alaska yet. Um, but now I'm over here. Um, the other gentleman in the chat room up above, Burger, Burger Lol, Burger Lol. His name is Henning. He's a German citizen. And him and his buddy Hans have gotten me back into gliding. And so I wanted to start my Europe, my European stuff over here, hanging out with Hans and Henning and. Um, check out Germany and um, get back into the uh, learning how to fly gliders tomorrow. If I can, if I can just get myself to do it and clean up some air, some stuff on my computer, I might be loading DCS World and doing some combat tomorrow for the first time. Uh, in Sky Dude, anyway, as uh, on this live stream series.
And I have to say, Germany is absolutely beautiful. Holy moly, what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country. And everything is so green. I feel like a, a character out of uh, Mel Brooks' History of the World. The French... The French King. Everything is so green. But it is. I can't... <laughs> I'm amazed at how green everything is. And uh, it's been really neat finding places of historical importance like that. The Roman battles against the Germans, some of those. I'm going to, on my next trip back, I'm going to try to find the Nurbur Ring. I haven't done Berlin yet. I need to see Berlin. I found the place where I was born in Germany, uh, near Stuttgart. It's uh, Landstuhl. So, uh, my dad was in the army, and I was born in, uh, in Landstuhl, Germany, but they moved back to the United States when I was one year old, so, yeah, so I was in Germany for one year, and unfortunately, in that one year, I guess pretty much all I got to eat was baby food, so didn't get any of the good stuff. Maybe towards the end of my first year, may have had a hot dog or a bratwurst or so, but. Every place I've flown so far, everything, we, we live on a beautiful planet, man. Even places in the United States that are just desolate, they look like alien terrain, the Badlands, even those are beautiful. Even the harshest, meanest terrain, there's still something beautiful in it all. Twenty-two minutes past the hour, so we're past the smoke break. I'm gonna I'm going to have a, a coughing fit is what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to get a new cup of tea and um, again, have a coughing fit. So pardon me while I step away from my computer for just a moment and let me play uh, the song I opened with from Brad Sucks. If you're not following his channel, I really recommend If you're into music and artists, he's a he's becoming a huge star in Canada. And he's been at it a long time. He's been on uh, Anyway, he's been putting out his music for a long, long, long time. And uh, he's had it in video games. The Guitar Hero stuff, I think. And recently, maybe in a movie. And it's nice seeing things really start to happen for him. Anyway, um, I found him a long time ago when I was finding music for my podcasts. And um, and he's great. So I'll be right back. Tea time. Here's Brad Sucks Total Breakdown. Maybe.
we're here. Runway 20. All right, we are here at our destination. Um, when you, uh, when you don't travel the world and you don't do a lot of flying around the world, and um, what? How do I say this? When I first started flying in the simulators um because of training i just confined myself to again my local airport and once you start doing cross countries for the first time you know uh, looking at a map growing up is one thing but you don't really understand the size the distances involved when you're just looking at a map there's you, you know Unless you actually travel, you just you don't have a whole lot of point of reference. And the world seems really small. So now that I've been doing cross countries and stuff, and realizing just how big the world is, it's so lovely to see that it isn't like some people imagine were the Earth is like a giant Borg sphere. We haven't covered every square inch of Earth with our footprint. You know, we've got big cities and all, but there's still so much open space still. And it might be all farmland, you know, putting it to good use. But either way, it's still open land. And it's lovely to see in places in Europe that have been around and have had historical stuff going on since the beginning of time, mostly, um, you know, that everything's still pretty much, you know, you still got a lot of open space. Some article that I read um, was saying that, oh, we're going to, cover the whole earth and there won't be any green places left in 80 years and I got to find the comment on something like that saying you obviously don't fly you don't know you don't get it how much open space there is you've never been out of your bedroom We've had thousands of years to cover the planet, and in thousands of years, we haven't put a dent on it. So I doubt we're going to do it in the next 80. Not even the next 800. Okay, with Neofly, if you feel lazy and you don't want to taxi all the way back to wherever it is, especially some of these major airports, my gosh, taxiing can be, can be a drag. And if you actually taxi at the proper speeds, 
can be even a little bit worse. I normally let my AI do the taxiing, especially when I'm in an airliner. As soon as I land and I get off the runway and announce that I'm clear of the runway, I switch it over to AI. Once they tell me where to go park, and then I just kick back and let the AI do the parking. Um, but for Neofly, the point I wanted to make here is that as soon as you pull off the runway and turn off the plane, it doesn't care that you made it all the way back to the taxi. Okay? We're within one mile of the airport at this point. Okay? So if you just come down here and turn off a couple of things, right? Then in a few seconds, once the propellers slow down, Neofly will... What happened to my pilot? That's weird. Oh, a possible other bug. Something else has happened in Neofly. I've been blown out. When I was when I was moving around here going to, to show the qualification things, somehow <laughs> now my plane and I are not in the same place. What the hell? It still says that the plane is LH fifty eight. But I am now at LHTM. And then the plane can't be transferred with jobs. Man, I think today was a bust. I mean, as far as, I mean, we can still, what is it now, 2.30? So yeah, I still have time to make another, another run. But this is really frustrating when things go wrong. And then you don't get paid. I don't know how to rectify this without killing the job and anything else at this point. Other than like starting it over again. Give me a moment while I try to figure this out. Grab my tea here. Okay. H58. Unbelievable. So it sees us connected again. And now, <laughs> now I have to restart it again back at LH 58. I think so. Oh, this blows. Well, we can always speed up time again. Wow, today's like that movie Groundhog Day. Hello, pilot. <laughs> I see what's on the books for you today. Do it again, do it again. Transporter from dispatch. I see you asked for a cargo mission. Oh my the gosh. Crew is waiting for you in the parking to load the crates. Oh my. Pilot from dispatch. The cargo door is open and the cargo is being transferred.
transporter. Loading is complete. Let's go. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Taxi to the runway and take off. Dispatch. Fly safe. Uh -huh. Let's get the plane leveled out before I kick in super speed and speed up the simulator. There's three, we should be fine. Okay. Deja vu. Ah, oh, yes, I remember that lake. And then this next group of lovely lakes up ahead. Ah, here they come. Yes, these. Yep, nice cluster of lakes. Hey, easy, 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 easy. What you doing? Going all over the place. Easy. What you doing? Doing the Stevie Wonder. What's wrong with you? Never trust an autopilot. Being hit by some crazy Hungarian electromagnetic weapon. Runway 20.
I forgot to ask, how long have you been doing flight simulation? What was your first flight simulator? And what was the plane you flew first? And what is your favorite plane? And have you ever flown in real life? Or have you taken any classes? I haven't yet. I'm too scared, I think. Whoa. I'm too scared. The more I learn, the more afraid I become. That was all. We have touchdown. Welcome. Please vacate the runway and proceed to parking. Okay. That was ugly. Transporter from dispatch. Clear the runway and taxi to parking. So it was still it was still sped up a little bit, so that was a little faster than I'm used to. Uh right, let me look at the response. Yeah, same here. So uh my dad had you know like 486 computers you know back in the day and i messed around and it's like i ah, you know but i didn't have the manuals or anything i just thought it was fun and then every version of simulator i had 2000 i had 2000 2003 pacific combat simulator flight and everything started changing around flight because up to that point, it was just fun to mess around with and to learn how to fly, but I couldn't stick a landing. I had this a fear of landing, I, not being able to see the ground. You know, it's just, it's so different. And so I told myself, well, if you can't stick a landing, pal, give it up. You know, you're not gonna, you're not meant to fly, man. If you, if you can't even stick a landing. But then Flight came out and the Icon A5. And it's so cool and so low profile and so easy that it started sticking landings. I was having so much fun. And it's like transitioning. Cargo Yay, we did it. Stand by. Oh, we got paid. So I started sticking landings and I'm like okay all right all right I can I can do this I can learn this and so going through all the training and um, accompl for the first time ever accomplishing all the training in a flight simulator my first crosswinds you know transporter the cargo has been delivered nice work have a nice day so yeah I'm like, okay, I, I want to learn more. Let's go. So then I got Flight Simulator X. And I did all of the missions. And uh, all the knowledge base extra videos and all the extra knowledge base Rod Machado training lessons. And then I'm like, I'm going to do this, man. I'm, I'm going to do this. The ones that really stopped me for a while was navigation. I could not get my head around VOR navigation. Just my brain didn't want to accept it. I don't know. I was just intimidated by the steam gauges, I think. Turning this knob and turning that knob and OBS and... Ah, I just couldn't figure it out. And then um, YouTube came out. 
And uh, and then I started watching 10-year-olds do ILS landings, and I felt like an idiot. You know, I'm struggling with navigation and everything, and I turn on YouTube, and yeah, there's all these little kids doing videos on ILS landings. I looked at my dad and I'm like, man, you're me. I, I'm your son here. I am. I am stupid. I feel so stupid. So then I just started building playlists on every flight instruction video I could find. It didn't matter if it was a simulator, flight simulator guy doing the video, or if it was a, a real flying instructor doing the video. It doesn't matter if it was an FAA video. Every flight video I could... I could. I just started building playlists. And as soon as I would wake up in the morning, I would turn them on. And even if I understood what the hell they were talking about or not, I would just let flight videos play all day long and all night long. And I would keep it on while I was sleeping. That it'll all sink in at some point. And it's all started to sink in. We're at the some point. Okay, so now we're back in Neofly. We got paid. And now we can pick another job. Try to find one maybe that, uh, let's see here. So Romania is around the corner. Isn't Transylvania around here then too? Romania, there's Ukraine, where all the shit's going down. I really wish they would work that stuff out in international courts, my friend. I wish that uh, we have finally got to the point where war is... No, no bueno. Just, we're done. No more wars. I really wish they would settle this thing in international courts and break out all the documentation, break out all the papers and seals of antiquity and work it out that way. I hate that we're... The whole world is caught up in this. And as I'm learning more and more about history, this area has always been a pain in the ass. Stuff is always going on here, forever. It's always an area of major conflict. So it seems. Vienna, Bulgaria, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, I've heard about it. Horrible stuff. North Macedonia, Alexander the Great territory, Kosovo. I didn't realize they were so close. Down to Greece. Wow. Wow, 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 man. Okay. Um... Hundred seventy eight miles. Let's make sure we fill up the damn tank this time. Or at least have enough. Make sure it registered. Good. So 15,000, that's 32,000, but we don't have the cargo capacity for that one. 24,000 for 155 miles. Yeah, and that's a timed... Do that one instead. Okay, that's going to take us up to Slovenia. 
Slovakia. I had a friend that lived here, uh, that lived in Slovakia for a while. He lived in this place over here, Bratislava. Oh, uh, we can't do this one? Nope. Not enough remaining cargo capacity. Let's zero it. Even zero, nope. All right, well, here's 127. Nope. You son of a gun. Well, we can try it. I don't really do too good with the timed ones, but we'll try it. LRCT is going to take us now towards Romania. All right. At least it's not a field. Transporter from dispatch. You must deliver express packages before the deadline. This time, don't waste time. We will try not to. LRCT. From dispatch. Loading express packages. Please stand by. All right, we need to set the weight at 1859. Okay, pilot. The mail packs are good to go. By my calculations, you should just make it on time. Close enough. This is another really good reason to, if you're going to do these timed ones. To just pull off the runway. So you can immediately get going again. Freeze. Simulator sometimes. It's uh, better every day and then worse sometimes. You know, um, you're what you're saying in the chat room. You know when, uh, with the whole Ukraine thing, it's crazy how accurate James Mattis saw the buildup back when he was defense minister under Trump. Dog Mattis. Okay, it doesn't want us to go, so it's bugging out. Let's just make sure that it's got us in the right airport at this point. No? It's, oh, you son of a gun. Okay, wait. I'm reading it wrong. I was wrong. Got bad vision sometimes. It does see us at the proper airport. Okay. 
so 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 we go back to the main menu and we spawn right back here Since we're respawning, we have the option now to actually build a whole flight plan with this LRCT. We know our destination. So I don't normally get to do this when working with Neofly. All right, so this gives us an opportunity, one, to set IRC, I mean IFR. And we can possibly pick an approach. No ILS. Okay. And then if there was any points of interest in particular that we needed to see, we would have the option to move to them. Okay. Hello, pilot. Good. Let's see what's on the books for you today. Good, good, good. So it's re-syncing properly, I think. Pilot, this is dispatch. The mail that is being loaded up is time sensitive. No delays, please. Yeah, Mattis uh, knew and, you know, but stuff has been going on for so long. Air crew, we will load the time deliveries as fast as we can to get you on your way. I don't appreciate us. I don't appreciate our involvement. Uh, I, you know, that's the way I feel. I mean, um, I think the people flight crew be advised the timed service cargo is now all on board. You are free to taxi. Okay. I don't know. Contact I hate making statements about things that I just really, truly, truly, truly don't understand. But I don't think we should be over there pushing Putin's buttons. This is for them to work out. And, you know, we've already, you know, sent our whole economy multiple times over over there. And I don't know that we should have even done that. Transporter, have a nice flight. Um, like, well, we, we need to stop Putin. Uh, you know. Tonight is the Tucker Carlson, speaking of Putin, tonight is the Tucker Carlson, Vladimir Putin interview. And we already had our defense minister, or whatever his name is, come out tonight and say, don't believe anything. He came out today and said, don't believe anything you hear coming out of Vladimir Putin's mouth. And I, if if I already have the have read the proper transcript of the interview last night, then I trust my government even less, because he says things that we know are going on, and it's just so sad to see. our own people gaslighting us. And that's the way I see that. Putin says, look, we don't, we don't want a problem with you. We don't want to fight you. We would rather be friends. What, we're not supposed to believe that? No, they're our enemy. Oh, really? So for the last 50 or more years with Yeltsin, with Gorbachev and Yeltsin and Putin, but now, oh, now we're fools of Vladimir Putin. 
So we know without a fact, for for a fact, that one, we need term limits. We don't have them. And we know for a fact, the way the government is set up, that there are individuals inside the government who are not elected, who never leave the job no matter who becomes president. That's a fact, Jack. It's just a fact. All right. And so when somebody like Putin says, there is a deep state in your government that is running things, and the president has very little control over there, you know, there is this, this, this deep state government within the government and they are deeply entrenched and they're the ones desperately trying to rule the world uh, run things the way that they see fit and they are unaccountable that's a fact and that's what Putin says but our uh, defense guy says don't believe anything that Putin says tonight When Putin is saying he doesn't feel that Biden is running things, well, neither do we. I'm over 50 years old, and I have been in watching politics, even though I, things I don't understand. I try to pay attention. And growing up, I always at least watched elections. They seemed exciting. Everybody was excited. It was like another sporting event growing up in our house. Elections were, you know, another Super Bowl. So everybody's gathered around, and my families were, our families were very political. And so, you know, I would pay attention. I don't know what's going on, but woo, you know. And watching election results come in over, let's just say, 40 years of watching elections. To finally see, to be able to recognize when an absurdity happens, the whole 81 million votes for, uh, or whatever, for Joe Biden. And then historically, if you don't win certain places, there's no chance you're ever going to win. He just defied all odds, just everything. Nothing about it made sense. And so people are out there protesting at the, uh, you know, so it's 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 becoming so obvious Anyway, I think America is in bad shape since nineteen seventy four when the Democrats, after everybody became hippies. In 1974, all the hippies got into the government, and they got the Democratic Party a, a supermajority. And since 1974, they have abolished all these firewalls that were in place to protect the United States. And they they dismantled all the great firewalls firewalls that America had in place. Okay, well, here's how I see it, and I hope I can alleviate your fears. I hope. Right? In the last 30 years, we have been waiting for politicians to come out and directly tackle the corruption in our government and, and tackle what I'm talking about, this deep-seated bureaucracy who are pulling the strings behind the curtains. And when growing up here in the United States of America, when the Internet first came to be and we first started being able to share information and chat with each other, quickly 
we would talk about these things, and they were all considered conspiracy theory. And then people like Alex Jones come up, and they're saying the same thing, and no, oh, it's all conspiracy theory, but it's not. And so, um, since then, there's only been like one politician, Ron Paul. And he was one of the first ones to say we need to deal with the bankers, for one, the, um, the Federal Reserve, get our banking under control again and put the power back in Congress. But either way, he was like one of the only politicians on either side to start saying, look, we need to deal with this. So now Trump comes along. And Trump has been saying that from day one. I'm taking the fight to the deep state. And he did. One of the first executive orders he did started making it uh, for the first time ever. You could get the, you could fire these people. He created an executive order that said it's okay. We can we can start firing all these unelected bureaucrats. And that was huge. And right then and there, you can see how they want to stop him. He removed, I want to say like 2,000 or more people from the State Department and started removing everybody from the, in, in, the deep state bureaucracy, draining the swamp. Okay? So, if there were any other politicians out there I know this Vivek Ramaswamy guy has been showing up making a bunch of waves, but he, you know, he says all the right things, but we don't know enough about him and we don't have enough time with him. There's not enough history with him. And due to his, what we know about his coming up and his funding and who he's been backed by, um, at the moment, without time, all we can say is, He's saying the right thing, but we we can't trust him. We don't. He says the right things. But he seems to be a tool of, of other forces. So at the moment, yeah, the only guy that, that, that uh, you know, not even DeSantis. They're not willing to, they're not willing to take on the status quo. They're not willing to say, wake up, everybody. We need a convention of states. We need to start uh, putting term limits on people. Thomas Jefferson said we should overthrow our government every 20 years, and we've never done it in the United States. We've never done what Thomas Jefferson said was required of us to do or that we should do. Because after 20 years or so, absolute power starts corrupting absolutely. And you've got a clear house. You've got to kick everybody out every 20 years or so avoid corruption and so yeah we've never done it so with Donald Trump all I can say is in in the United States we need somebody like him and right now he's pissed off and as we all are you see how they're trying so hard to do everything they can Why am I not? Oh. Well, that would help. Talking so much, I'm not paying attention, and I've... Okay. So everybody's like, oh my god! He's saying he'll be a dictator! Right, yeah, that's exactly... <laughs> yes, yes. There are so many people in our government that deserve to be in jail. Now, in the past, if we were still operating with military tribunals, I would say a good 50% or more of people that have been in Congress would be hanged. So they've set themselves up, you know, to where they're immune. They've got qualified immunity for a lot of things, diplomatic immunities that they've put in place for themselves. But yeah, if this was, if the people are like, what would our founders say if they were to come back today? 
uh, are what would they do? Well, right after Donald Trump became a president, the sedition, treason, and actual insurrections that were taking place across the United States and in sanctuary states, um, our founders would have had strung them all up. And so they are freaking out. They're telling everybody, oh, my God, he is going to be a dictator. He is going to go after journalists. He's going to do. And yes, that is what the president is supposed to do. That is what the government is supposed to do with people inside the government that think it is theirs. That treat it as their thing. They become lords and ladies. They're all billionaires now. And they've amassed so much power and wealth that it's corrupted them absolutely. And they no longer work for us. And again, they've driven us into the hole. I'm old enough to remember when bread was 35 cents. And, and you know, people are like, well, that's just natural inflation. No, it's not. Governments create inflation. They've destroyed every bit of prosperity we've ever had and built up. And they've got us to where we're at a point where economists say we can't recover. <laughs> you have spent so much money, you'll, with the interest alone, you'll never be able to recover. So, yeah, I think Donald Trump and I hope I didn't increase your fear of why. But when you hear things like, it's he's a white supremacist, we're racist, we're this, we're that, we're this, we're that. None of, that's all fluff. That's all, that's all smoke and mirrors to keep your focus off the fact that he wants to dismantle the power structures. It's unfortunate that he didn't have enough knowledge going in in the first four years to really understand what he was up against. But when he came out, he's like, it's worse than you would ever imagine. It's worse than you can possibly imagine. And I had no idea how deep it went. But now he does. And now he's pissed off. Again, as we all are. Yeah, it sounds crazy. But it's all fact. Every bit of it. None of that, none of, I don't believe anything that I've said can't be verified. That's my wife. One moment, please. Hello. Hello. Oh, I think I just disconnected her. Hello. Hi, I just want to say hi real quick. All right. Yeah, I'm running a little bit long today. All right, that's fine. I'll call when I leave. Oh, and I've, I've sorted out Danielle's monitor. It was the, her. It was an OBS issue, not a monitor issue. Okay. But it's all sorted. All right, good. All right. Okay, I'll call when I leave. Okay, goodbye. Bye. All right. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but it, it's all it's all completely verifiable. One of these days, I'm just waiting for an academic, an honest political science academic and historians to do a uh, an essay on you know the decline of America. You know, uh, what are what is causing the decline of America. And you can then trace that back to certain acts that the Democrats have pulled off, like uh, the supermajority in 74. The first thing they did when the Democrats got a supermajority in 1974 is they abolished HUAC. Now, you may have been taught about McCarthyism. That's how it was presented to me in school. McCarthyism. Well, the House Un-American Activities Committee... Uwak predates 
McCarthy. Okay. He is just the person they, they used as the to, to pin it on. Okay. So the House Un American Activities Committee was allowed to root out subversives in the United States foreign subversives and uh, even homegrown, homegrown subversives and you were accountable and you had you you know you were doing some shit they could call you in and have you explain yourself before the American people well, what are you doing so when we had that one firewall in place that prevented enemies of America and and homegrown subversives from operating in our institutions, especially education. Don't screw with the kids. So the first thing the Democrats did when they achieved a supermajority is they abolished the House Un-American Activities Committee, started calling it McCarthyism, and it was bad. McCarthyism bad. How, how dare we cause the communists, Marxists, ists, and other ists to self-deport? Or how dare we bring them in front of Congress and, and make them account for themselves? How dare we? McCarthyism is so bad. So up to that point in time, as depicted in cool movies like even The Rocketeer. The Rocketeer is all about that time period where the Nazis had infiltrated Hollywood. The communists and the Nazis, the Germans, the Nazis, sorry. It was the past. It is what it is. It was war, whatever. Okay, so I'm not... But either way... The Nazi Party and communists were directly operating out of Hollywood and using it to create propaganda. And in the movie The Rocketeer, you see the Nazi spies behind the scenes, you know, and it's all about, you know, rooting out those guys. And um, if they felt that the government was on to them, they would just leave. The movie Hail Caesar also deals with the same period where the communists are trying to influence the most popular actors and actresses into becoming communists and, and to put out communist propaganda. So our founders said we don't want certain things in the United States. For us to operate the way we want the United States to operate, we don't want these ideologies. They we 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 reject these ideologies and they're not good for us and we can't stand to have these ideologies operating in the United States if we're going to try to survive. Okay, so that's 1974. The Democrats abolish HUAC, and immediately all of the subversives come running back to the United States and re-entrenching in Hollywood and re-entrenching in the media and re deeply re-entrenching into the schools, into education. So that alone, you can say, man, that alone right there was one of the greatest betrayals of America. That was slapping all of the founders across the face and ignoring our, our the basic idea of what America was supposed to be. So that's one of the reasons, just right off, one reason alone why I, I hate the Democratic Party. But now, over time, the Republicans and a lot of them 
they've all become buddy buddies. They're all benefiting. And so an outsider like Trump coming in, <laughs> he couldn't win as an independent. That's just not the way things are operating at the moment. If you want to win, you've got to operate in one of the two parties or you really can't go anywhere. Third parties just don't work, stupidly. But that's what we're stupid. So it was good. It was good for him as an outsider to come in and not only a, he's reforming the Republican Party as well. They hate him. They hate him so much. Here's a man who became a millionaire billionaire on his own, was never accepted into the uh, Illuminati elites. They're not going to ever consider him one of the elite elites. Because he doesn't have any power. He's got money. He doesn't have any power. And they used to mock Donald Trump mercilessly. Because, again, he'll never be one of them. He's not old money power. He's not one of the, uh, the gang, the deep state gang. And so... You know, and then all of a sudden, uh, he he becomes the president, and now he now he's got the power too. Oh my God, they hate him so much. So after, other than Trump, I don't know. I wish somebody, if you know, I worry now about there being people that can, if he becomes president again and can do some crazy great things here that would be wonderful but after what about afterwards i'm still looking for the next person we can trust rush limbaugh died sadly uh i would have liked to for him somebody like him to become president somebody you can trust with a history of telling you the truth who knows how everything operates nikki haley is out there Everything she says, she you know she is corrupt as hell. DeSantis, he had the opportunity to go in there and have four years of recon to learn how Washington works, and then eight years as a president, and he had it in the bag. He's got it wrapped up. All he had to do is say, hey, I'm with Donald Trump. That's all he ever had to say. I'm with Trump. Even if he didn't believe it, that just shows you how stupid he is. He didn't even know how to play the game and win it. They all chose to open their mouths and go against him, which, again, why? Why in the world would you go against Trump when at the at the heart of the matter is a reformation? So I guess it's far better that they blundered and they've outed themselves. Because all DeSantis had to do was just say, hey, I'm with Trump. That's it. Get up on stage. I'm a Trump. And leave the stage. And he would have been the vice president. And he would have immediately... He he already had everybody's hearts and minds. He had, he had it. He, he had it. He was going to become the president. He still could. But not now. I mean, and that's, what all, and that's what we kept telling him. Just back off. You'll get your turn. You've got it in the bag. But... We need somebody that's pissed off now. We need somebody that's pissed off that is going to go in and do the hard thing. The hard things. And there isn't a warrior politician out there, maybe other than Rand Paul, who has the balls take the fight to the deep state. So, I think it would be great for Germany. Uh, I can't, I don't live, I again, I, I don't know much. I know that we have a lot of the same problems. And 
and I know as we move into the future, we definitely have a big problem. And I'm absolutely certain if the shit hits the fan, whether you like the idea or not, that, that we're friends. We are absolutely friends. We are... Uh, we need each other so much. And we, we all, deep down in our governments, we all have a similar problem. Okay. Your P. Ah. So, you know, the weird thing is, I just mentioned the Trump phone call while there's an ongoing scandal here where the alt-right party, AFD, talks about deporting all immigrants like in World War II. In shortly after our founding, the founders realized they had made a mistake. And it all revolves around Islam. Okay, so our founders said we've made a terrible mistake. And Islam does not want to be compatible with the Western values. They, um, their people... have showed in the United States of America that they refused to assimilate and that wherever they were entrenched, they created civil discord, uh, civil uh, disharmony. They, um, they just caused problems. And when they have sufficient numbers, they attempt to dominate. Okay, so our founders, by 1790, I forgot to request the IFR clearance. So, uh, the Immigration Act of 1790 was a unanimous decision. And what our founders said is, we will not allow Islam to immigrate into the United States. Let's give them some time to work their shit out, and maybe at some point in the future, we'll think about it. Okay, so another firewall, like HUAC. The Democrats and some Republicans, starting around 1952, decided in their wisdom that it was okay to start allowing Islam into the United States, and they abolished the Immigration Act of 1790, the Immigration Act of 1952, and the McCarran Act. Now, the McCarran Security Act forbid Islam and other types from becoming, uh, from uh, being in the Congress and being in the government. And so, in their wisdom, they've decided not only to allow Muslims, Islam, to immigrate in the United States, 
They allowed them into the government. And all around the world where they're at, they haven't changed. 200 years and they haven't changed. They're doing the same shit that they've been doing and they will not reform. And we see when they have sufficient power and they are entrenched enough, they demand Sharia law. No, no go zones for police. This is a Sharia territory. Fuck that. Fuck them. So probably going to get this particular live stream now flagged because I dropped two F-bombs. Let me drop a third one. Fuck them. And that's the way I feel about it. So I am all up for booting their all of their asses out. The government said, when you come in, you pledge allegiance and you swear to assimilate. When you say, no, I'm not going to do that, you're out. Our founders also said you should only allow immigration for short periods of time to allow everybody to spread out, to assimilate, mostly to assimilate. And if you bring in too many people at one time, you can destabilize your whole nation. Okay? So now they're feeding us this bullshit. Oh, they're our future. We need them. We need them for our economies. We need them, you know, unless you already have great works jobs to bring them all in and immediately put everybody to work into, you know, like we didn't. Our Democrats didn't do that. They're just like, oh, well, open the door. They're concerned about voters. They didn't say, let's create five great works projects and announce that and say, hey, you want to come into the United States? Here are at least five great works options, which will support thousands of workers. Go, to, go here, go here, go here, go here, go here. And none of these sanctuary cities and states are like, yep, we are sanctuary and we have we have a need for massive amount of workers to deal with these jobs. So come here, 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 and here. That's not what they've done. So I have no problem uh, saying deport all them too. They're trying to tell us, ha, ha, ha. You can't deport that many people. It's been done. It's been done in our past. It's been done in our past. And most, like I mentioned earlier with HUAC, when the government is on to you, most people will self-deport. And they did in the past. Millions of people self-deported. There was no need to make a spectacle of things or get violent. So... I would not buy into anybody saying there's too many people they won't they won't leave. Oh, they'll leave. And I have no sympathy. I mean, I do. I mean, I want I mean, if we had done things properly, it would be wonderful to be generous again and say, "Yes, oh please, oh, you know, we need all these people. We're trying to rebuild all these things and do all this these great works and we absolutely need need them, but you know, you can't trust anybody who disobeyed the first law. You know, they've already broken a law and are here illegally. And so, uh, yeah. Yes, yes. We have those deep, and you put quotation marks. Yeah. To me, that's endgame. That, that's endgame. There, there isn't anything else. I mean, why they want us to fight with Russia? Why the hell we're fighting with each other at all? When we have a much, much bigger problem combined. We all have a major problem. Any fighting amongst ourselves at this point is stupid. It's so stupid.
and now they're on the verge of uh, nuclear weapons? That terrifies me. Because they're they're nuts, man. They're 12th century back ass words. Sons of bitches. With a perverted with a perverted religion. And it shouldn't be allowed in our countries. They've got plenty of countries where they can enjoy their perverted religion all they want. It is sad to see them bring turmoil despite the past. We all we we all fuck up at some point. You know? We all fuck up. And uh and I don't want to get into World War II, the history of World War II of who was right, who was wrong in the big picture of things. Uh I don't really I don't really want to go there because but either way, my point was is it's it's a it's a real shame to see great nations like yours having to deal with it. Um, thankfully, your people are trying to wake our asses up and say, "Hey, yeah, see." And we see the strife they are bringing to other great nations. I don't know how I accumulated all this height. I've got my engines, my throttle all the way down. And I've, I've just been trying to come down. <laughs> for like the last 10 minutes just I, as I was talking I just wasn't paying attention I kept climbing higher and higher and now I'm way up here trying to get down to an airport I could have been at like 15 minutes ago yes we have no we have to we have to stay friends So they come around. Everybody else has come around, you know, for the most part. You know, we've all... We've been through enough and we've reformed enough to just at least be tolerant enough. But they're not there yet. And I don't know if they ever will be. I really don't. I would like to believe, but look where that's got us after another 200 years. And I say we give them 200 more. I'm all about bringing back the uh, Immigration Act of 1790. No more. Sorry. No. You... No. Take another 200 years in the time out and then, and then give us a call. If they push things... I have no sympathy. I'd like to see it all leveled. They've got the greatest history underneath their feet. And if they would just devote themselves to history and archaeology in general, they would be rich, 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 rich. And if they would be a place where you would want to go and be touristy, just the history alone. The profits that they could make off of, uh, like ancient, ancient aliens enthusiasts, 
who want to go visit all these ancient ancient places. But no, the, all the great greatest places where a lot of our ancient information is coming from, which we really need to, you know, get a get an understanding of. You know, uh, now we've got all these assholes that are in control of everything over there. So that's why I wish Putin and the Ukrainians would work their shit out. And uh, because, again, you know, every day that we're not just keeping an eye on them. Big trouble. And our again, our government's facilitated it. Our government has, uh, like Donald Trump just said today. And he said it over and over again. Man, when I was in office, we had him bankrupted. They couldn't do anything. And since the Democrats have come back into tower uh, power, they're now sitting on five or more, five billion, five hundred billion. You know, and again, now what's what's that done that caused all the crap to erupt in the uh, in Palestine? Democrats just make things worse. Liberals of, uh, I think, throughout all of history, if we were to have a huge essay on what is the number one reason that caused most empires and nations throughout all of recorded history to fall. And I think if we were to take it back all the way to the days of the ancient Sumerians, the poets say the people were screaming, open up the gates, let the those people in, let the barbarians in, Don't doesn't everybody deserve a good life? Open the gates. And then Sumer fall, and then the poets are like, where are your great highways now, Sumer? Where are your great cities now? Your great waterways? Yeah, the very first civil, uh, you know, major civilization on planet Earth. And the Democrats, they weren't, you know, whatever you want to call them, liberals. Destroyed that. The liberals of Rome. Oh, let the barbarians into Rome. What's it gonna hurt? Let everybody in. Everybody deserves what we have. Greece. Oh, it's the same shit over and over and over again. And it's the same people. Because the human condition doesn't change. Our psychologies don't change. There are only so many archetypes. We, there, <laughs> there's only so many types of people on this planet. And it's a short list of personality traits. So yeah. Definitively, you can say the same assholes that have uh, that are bringing our countries down today are the same assholes that brought down every great nation and empire before us. When you let these people into power, they will absolutely screw everything up. That's where all of our education fails us. Finally down down to the ground. RCT. Last thing I want to do is be a racist asshole, but it's cause and effect now. I'm not going to 
just take the blame. Uh, you know, everything I'm saying might sound terribly racist, but again, it takes two to tango. I never wanted to be in that position to have to be against other people. I don't like it. I don't want to be a racist. But when you cause another group of people, when you live up to your stereotypes and you are everything you say you are not, uh, yeah, pretty easy to become a racist. CT. I don't even see it. Well, uh, my friend, this wonderful bit of <laughs> this lively conversation that we've had has caused my brain to short circuit, and I am 94 miles off course. 93. How? I'm not certain how I managed to do that. And we were over here earlier, so somehow or another I went from here, we were making our way there, and then all of a sudden I got turned around and we were headed back to LHBC. I don't know. I'm an idiot. That's what I get. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not your fault. I'm the idiot, so <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's my own stupidity. Some very, very tough things to think about today. Ah, I uh, grew up wanting to be a superhero and a, at least be a good guy. And uh, growing up, always believing that good will prevail. And um, all the great spiritual works tell us don't worry, it'll all it'll all work out right. Don't have any fear. Stop being so stop being so nervous. Don't worry, be happy. And uh I would much rather be that way. It it'll all work out. It's no matter what. Good always wins. It'll all work out. Those mountains look a little taller than 3,000 feet. Very long live stream today. I've been finishing them up, up, up around 3 p.m. So this is running about an hour long, but it's fine. There's nothing uh, going on. And it's lovely getting somebody else's perspective. And it's nice to know that Maybe there are some some things that um, that we have common ground on. The Diamond DA forty two. That is a plane I have messed around with. That's a twin engine, if I'm not mistaken. And 
when Flight Sim World by Dovetail Games was released. Now, Dovetail Games picked up the license from Microsoft to release the Steam edition of Microsoft Flight Simulator X. FSX. Okay, so it was Dovetail Games that had the license. So, Microsoft had no plans to release another flight simulator. But then Dovetail Games said, well, thank you, Microsoft, for giving us the license to release Flight Simulator X. We would like to now create a new flight simulator called Flight Sim World. We're also going to release one called Flight School. And they did. And if you were around at the time on Steam when that happened, um, you if you purchased Flight Sim World, you would have gotten Flight School for free. And it was awesome. Awesome. In some ways, the flight models were almost a little bit more beautiful than 2020. And it was as historic an accomplishment as is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And flight school was awesome. Tough. Tough. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, in my own, on my own channel, there's a whole folder or playlist area dedicated to the training missions of flight school. And bring me to my point. That's where I got my training. You have to go through a training to fly the DA-42, and they teach you about... There's two, two emergency procedures, or one big one is engine failure on takeoff. So in the DA, you have to practice engine failure on takeoff. And it's how fast can you shut down your engine and kick your brakes on and not go flying off the runway. And then the second bit of emergency training in the DA is engine failure after takeoff. So how to quickly get your bearings, get yourself spun around and get back down to the ground. So uh, it's a it's a wonderful plane. That was the very first time I had ever messed with the glass cockpit, the G1000. And she's wonderful. She's a wonderful plane. Let me go ahead and speed up. Speed up the sim. There's two, three, four. If not, I'm sure you can find plenty of videos out there that other folks have done of uh, Dovetail Games, Flight Sim World, and Flight School. Uh, and then, uh, for uh, I guess the sales were doing. I don't know what compelled Microsoft at that point to pull the license. They must have been using the Flight Simulator X technology in the Microsoft technology in some way, because Microsoft announced they were going to make Flight Simulator 2020, and they had Dovetail pull the flight simulators off the market. They are no longer available. If you had them purchased on Steam, you can still use them. But other than that, they're done. They're gone. They made that product vanish. And it's really sad because they should have at least left it out there for people to see what a historic achievement it was. They had the whole world just like we do. And they had a lot of fun missions, lots of fun ones. Um, so they had a, a nice career mode and um, it wasn't as beautiful I mean it was beautiful in itself the terrain was beautiful it was all autogen but it was beautiful it wasn't photogrammetry but that's not a big deal or it wasn't back then anyway but it's a shame again because it the I can't imagine the work that went into that thing and you create this super amazing thing and then 
the world doesn't get to enjoy it and see it. And that's that's the real tragedy of that. Very opposed to them doing that. I would like to find somebody, and I don't know if they have done it. I haven't really been checking the uh, the other flight sim websites that sell third-party airplanes. Uh, if anybody's done the SR-71 Blackbird, I know that there's a good F-22 now on the marketplace, and I've just been griping about the cost, but it's not it's not that bad. But I'd really like to get the F-22. I've got the 35, and I love it. Um. The Osprey is another one that I think I would like. Other than that, I can't think of any any more that... Uh, maybe helicopter-wise, I would like the Warthog. Got the F-14 and the F-18 or 16, whatever one they gave us from the Top, Gear, uh, top Gun. I've grown to absolutely love this plane. I never thought this would be one of my favorite planes. But I absolutely love the caravan. I think in the real world, if I were to go get my license and learn how to fly, and if I could ever afford it, this would absolutely be the plane that I want. I would want to customize the inside of this thing, like an RV. This is ideal, man. And especially as fat as we all are here in the United States these days, you need you need a bigger plane. Small planes just don't cut it anymore. But this one's got enough space that you could really, really have a good time in here customizing this thing. You could put a little kitchen, a little bathroom, a little bed. You could. This is awesome. You could have a little desk. Oh, you have that one too from India Fox. Yep, and it is awesome. All the military planes before that felt like they were created by foreigners you know as you learn your way up through general aviation planes all the way to airliners I mean they talk about all the knowledge is scalable so like you know altimeters altimeter well all your basic flight learning stuff as you move from one plane to another you can easily figure out how to operate the thing even if you move from uh, a Cessna all the way up to an Airbus. All the ideas and the principles stay the same. All the controls are labeled the same. You will you can figure it out. But when you get into a military jet, uh -uh, nah, none of it's labeled the way you think. None of it works the way you think. None of it does. It's just so foreign. But then the F-35 comes along and it's like, well, this makes sense. This is, this seems to be designed by somebody who actually, you know, worked their way up through a flight school. It all makes sense. And I can't wait to see as we move into the future, I mean, how, how much more easy they can make those planes, military aircraft. I love it. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping the F-22 is at all like the 35, because that's something I really want to play around with is the uh, the vector control thrust. Okay. LRCT.
Wind is blowing from the west. 6.4 miles. Hello. Whoa, easy now. Easy. <laughs> You're a fan of the real thing, but you never want to be close to it. Yeah, on the receiving end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would not want to be on the receiving end of it either. Henning really wants me to load up DCS World and uh, do some PvP. So after I'm done with this live stream, I'm going to wrap this up here in about... Well, when we get down to the ground, we'll, I'm wrapping it up for the day. And I'm going to go into my computer and clean up some space. I have a couple of games. Like Rome Total War and... Some others that I need to clear off the hard drive. And look at DCS World again to see how big it is. And load it up. And chances are tomorrow, if you have it, we're going to be doing DCS World Combat. Although I'll be doing it badly because I don't remember anything. And I don't have the money to spend on getting fancy planes. So I think we're probably going to be in the standard stock SU-25 Frogfoot plane. And I'm sure I'm going to get blown up a lot. Because those guys have been practicing. They've been flying that daily. And they've been playing another game called War Thunder. And they want me to go over there to blow me up. So I think I'll load that up and give them the satisfaction of blowing me out of the sky tomorrow. So, if that interests you, if you'd like to fly along. And, um, we do, uh, we've been doing glider practice flying together. If that interests you, please, come along. The more the merrier. And, um, they like flying jets. I like flying jets. So... I don't always just stick to doing this. And it's always fun flying with other people. Turn oh my landing lights are still on. We're on our separator. Five hundred. Mm-hmm. Happy lights say we're okay. The Romanian Air Force 71st Air Base oh. is located near the city of Campia Terziai in Clutch County. The 71st Air Base was founded on the 1st of June 2002, according to the Romanian Armed Forces Reorganization Program. 
Since its foundation, the unit has become one of the best units of the Air Force thanks to the pilot's proficiency in carrying out flight missions, day and night and all weather, and to you the responsibility of the, the logistics support to personnel. The base is home to the 711th, 712th Fighter Squadrons, operating MiG-21 Lance RS, and to the 713th, 714th Helicopter Squadrons, operating Air 330s. Yeah, even making that mistake, I'm surprised that we didn't cancel get our job canceled on us because this was a timed mission, and even making those mistakes. Cargo unloading in progress. We did it. Stand by, pilot. So, normally they're not that generous at all. Normally, uh, whenever I, normally I skip these because I always fail them all. I never seem to get there on time. So we got lucky today, and we managed to get both jobs paid out. Even though that first one we had to do Groundhog Day several times. Aircrew, be advised. The express cargo has been unloaded. Excellent. Hopefully we'll just meet the deadline. Have a great day. May the force be with you. Okay. Sir, uh, Let's get out of it's here. been a real pleasure, and I do hope you come back. And um, I hope you like and subscribe. I've subscribed to your channel, and I look forward to anything that you want to put up. Uh, I'm a good I'm a good follower. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the show with the uh, music I started the show with and I played on our break. The Brad Sucks Total Breakdown. I'll see you tomorrow.